Hello everyone, my name is Philip Adu. Um, this is the part two presentation of using sorting strategy in qualitative analysis. Uh, for this part two, um, I'm going to talk about how to use in vivo to sort your codes and also develop themes or categories. So um, in our my previous uh, presentation, I talk about eight steps that you could follow. So these are the steps that you could follow that uh, will help you to move from having codes to having categories and themes. So in this presentation, it's going to be a similar steps. Um, so as you can see here, I have my codes here and I have the sources and I have frequency. So the sources can also be called um, generality. So generality is the number of times significant information were assigned to the, um, the code that you have here, right? So the first step that you have to take is to create clusters, right? So, um, you know, we don't have specific number of classes you can create for this. Um, for this example, I'll create about five classes. You can create uh, 10 classes depending on the number of items and uh, number of code that you have here. So if you want to develop or create clusters, so clusters are, you just think about it, they are containers. They are huge containers you're going to drop these code into it, them, right, based on the relationship between the codes. If they have some kind of relationship, then you can put them together and drop it in the cluster. So I'm going to create um, about five clusters. So cluster one. Let me copy this so that it be faster. So cluster one, you click on aggregate. So I right click here again, and then cluster two, check aggregate, right click, node, new node, cluster three, check aggregate. So the aggregate will help you to, you know, add everything up. So let's say when you drop all the significant information into the, um, the clusters, um, the various clusters, it will add up all the frequencies and then that will be the aggregate. So that's why I choose that. You right click again and cluster four, I think I have to make a space here, check aggregate. And then right click, class uh, uh, five. So I said we're going to have five classes. As I say, you can have more than five. Um, you have to be flexible in this process and you have to be creative. So based on, so we have five classes. So First, the first stage is to identify the significant or dominant. Um, you identify the first step is to identify the dominant code, right? So the dominant code is assessed based on the source of the code and the number of source of the code and the number of frequencies. So, so out of ten participant. Five of the participants um, had their significant information selected to be part of this um, code, right? So, um, so looking at the source and looking at the frequency, we have two main uh, dominant um, codes. And as I said in my previous presentation, you can have more than one. You can have one dominant code. You can have 10 dominant code. It depends on the sources and the frequency. So you can see that there are two highest frequency here and there are two sources that are high, right, uh, compared. So these are the two dominant ones. So what you can do is you drop them into 
um, each one of the clusters each one so so I will drop this one you know into the cluster one and I'll drop this one into cluster two right so now when you click on plus you can see that the information have been dropped into that cluster right so the next one is to find out okay so when you look at the helpful um, course material is there any kind of um, information here that have uh, any code here that have some kind of relationship that you can put in into this cluster that has um, helpful course materials so from my view you know um, as I always tell students quality analysis is a subjective process um, I might decide to drop this one into that but you may think that it has no relationship the most important is to make sure that you have reviewed the content of okay the characteristics of each of the nodes and see whether it has any kind of connection uh, with the dominant one before you start dropping the information in there so i can see that increased value on increased value on learning activity has some kind of relationship with the helpful course uh, material right so um I move it here and drop it into the first cluster uh, and I go through again I realize that there's no class um, if a uh, code here that has any kind of relationship with the first cluster or the information in the first cluster so then I move to the second Y cluster right and for the second cluster, increase motivation has some kind of relationship with this one and also always think about your research question too right and also if you, if you think that the content or uh, um the um code has some kind of uh, it doesn't really represent the significant information that has been assigned in, into that code you can you know you may you can adjust it by just clicking click on it and then you can make some changes to the name if you want um, um, so you always have to be flexible in this process the chain the name that represents significant information might change um, if you think that the name doesn't really um, reflect the content or the significant information that has been dropped into this kind of node right so it's the same thing as so if you want to better you know uh, analyze or do this well you have to listen to my first presentation because I will go uh, into detail how to analyze each of the co codes to make sure that um, the content or the significant information in the code represents the label of the node here so um, just to make sure just uh, review my first presentation so um, I was saying that increased motivation was well, increased motivation has something to do with improved engagement so you can move it here and drop into the second cluster um, another one will be promote active learning so you bring that also to the second cluster and I think one another one is more prepared in class have something to do with this one and then you drop it so you can see that you have already dropped all the information that I have any kind of relationship with improve engagement the next one that you have to think about is if the rest doesn't have anything to do with the first cluster the second cluster then you decide you put the, the some into the rest of the clusters so you go through and see that I can see that increased performance and perceived student learning has some kind of connection right so you Bring, you can bring it to the third cluster you select it and move it and then drop it and you can do the same thing here 
uh, perceive learning you sometimes it's really difficult to move okay move it here and drop it and then um, increase student satisfaction and positive view um, of the course have some kind of connection you can put it in the fourth cluster so you see how I'm grouping them based on the relationship, the similarities between them, right? Okay, so you can do that. And then the last one that uh, we have left is reduce stress. There are some times where you will have a call that has nothing to do with the, the an initial cluster that you have. So in this case, you have to create a new cluster and put them inside, or the remaining cluster and put that information inside. So in this way, there is nothing in the cluster five. So you can drop that information there because it has nothing to do with the rest of the clusters, right? So you move it here. Sometimes okay, record and then you drop it. So now we have put all the information into the uh, respective clusters. So we have five clusters, right? So the next step is to label the clusters based on the content under them, right? So based on the content of the code you you explore examine the content and then think about a phrase or a code or a label that can represent all of the content of the information here sometimes you can use the words or the phrase that has been used in the code to label it the most important is to make sure that that label represent all the information under that right so one example is that when you look at the first cluster, we can label it as improves student engagement. So you can put a column there and then type improve student engagement. Um, I think it doesn't um, accept column. So you can bring underscore and then bring that improves student, student engagement. Uh, oh no, I think it's not this one. Sorry about that. Um, I'm talking about the second one. Yes, you see the improves the level is for the second improves the engagement. The first cluster uh, we can say that increases uh, value on learning activities and course material. So that will capture both information. Um, and the next cluster, based on the content, we can call that uh, increased academic performance, increase academic performance. Um, so it doesn't have a spell check, so you have to be very careful typing. It will not correct it for you if you really type it wrong when it's typo. So the next one is you can also increase student satisfaction, increase student satisfaction. The last one will be maybe reduce and use the same name, code name to all the label of the code to do that reduce stress so this is how so you can at the end of the day you see how you have developed your nodes and um, your categories or themes based on these this step so you can see that you have all your know that are addressing your research question that you have and you also have to uh, make sure that as i said the labels are consistent with your research question you should be able to address your research question sometimes you end up having you can call these categories or themes 
um, if it's let's say you come up with about maybe 10 clusters then you can call them categories and then you can further analyze those clusters um, by seeing whether there's a similarity to bring them together and then you can develop maybe about five themes from it um, so you could you know call these categories or themes depending on how you view it um, i will call these themes because they are only five and they um i'm not going to do further analysis if it was were about maybe 20 or maybe 10 i might do further analysis to develop themes and call these categories so these are the steps that you could follow um to uh, come up with the uh, themes. Um, I hope this helps. So one more thing. So you can see here that you have sources. These have the number of participants that the significant information are coming from. And you can see here that improved student engagement is, is now the dominant theme, um, followed by the um, increased value on learning activities and um, learning activities and course. Let me see, I have to pull it, course materials. So you can see here um, that you can see the, uh, the references, the total reference, and then also the sources. I think that will be useful when you are writing your findings. Okay, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget to do that. Um, I'll be you know, presenting short videos that will help you to um, further um, analyze your data and also learn about more about research methods. Um, they, if you want to email me, these are my information. You can follow me on Twitter. And as I said, if you can subscribe to my channel, that would be great. You get a lot of information. Um, I'll be putting up a lot of videos that will help you to successfully complete your research. Thank you for your time. In